MySQL triggers. What a trigger is, is a kind of little procedural program that gets run when you either insert, update, or delete from a database. The way we're going to use this today is we're going to insert a trigger that runs before you insert data to a database. So we've got this test forum here, uh, this, this test vBulletin forum, and what we want to have happen is we're going we're gonna to register a new user. And when we do that, okay, we want to catch their email address and the time at which they registered into a new table beforehand okay that's just for this test you can do a million different things with it but for what we're gonna do before the data gets inserted in the database we're gonna catch it and take it to another table now that table that we're gonna put it into is gonna be called uh... let's see where is that the table we're gonna put it in is called trigger i've created this table it does not come with vbulletin uh, trigger okay let's take a look at what trigger is so we have a CMD, which I'm calling command. We're going to catch whether it's an insert, an update, or a delete. We're going to catch the time, a full timestamp, okay? And we're going to use the timestamp uh, type that way, because that, that's the actual type of the MySQL timestamp. We're going to get the issuer, as in we're going to get, if, if your database is on a local host, like mine is, then it's going to be root at local host, or whatever your password is and your username sorry just your username uh, but if your database is, is not and it's online then you'll be able to find out who accessed the database at this point usually you're catching your program so it should be your program and then we're gonna have the email address of the new data that's being inserted okay and that's all that's here now how do you add a trigger we're gonna add a trigger to the user table so this is the users table okay you can see all the information that's in here and this is the field email that we're going to be catching okay to add a trigger you need to execute raw SQL statement so go to the SQL tab delete what's in here here's where we begin starting off we need to uh, the first SQL code we're going to write we need to drop the trigger if it exists because every time this gets because we might be editing and updating this you can't have more than one trigger for the same event on the same table. So we need to start off by dropping the trigger if it exists. Uh, and the trigger is going to be, now, this is, uh, we, we could do just drop uh, catch insert is what it's called. But that's, you need to prefix it with the name of the table, which is forum. I'm sorry, the name of the database. So forum dot catch insert is the name of the trigger okay this is basically saying this is the name of the trigger it exists in this database okay catch insert now we need to end we need to we need to end this statement this SQL statement normally you end a SQL statement with a semicolon that's normally how you do it however our program that we're going to write because triggers aren't SQL code, they are procedural programs, they use semicolons, and they have to use semicolons. Therefore, I can't use semicolons outside. So this down here, this delimiter, we're going to change that to uh, forward slash forward slash, and then we're going to end it here. So basically we're saying don't use a semicolon, use slash slash. Okay. Now we're going to create the trigger, now that we've dropped it, create the trigger. Now we're going to create the exact same thing, forum dot catch catch insert because we're basically we're catching the insert okay now the timing either before or after we want it before before or after what before we insert right you could change this to insert or update or delete on now what table well it's the database dot table is the correct syntax you can't just do user because it doesn't know what database we're in now this probably will work but just be safe and go ahead and use forum dot user okay now what we need to do is we're still in in the same line of code but I'm going to hit enter just uh, to give myself some more room but we are in the same line of code so space enter now we're going to do this for each row that's so, so there's multiple rows getting inserted they'll all be caught so for each row now we're going to use a keyword begin okay what begin is going to do is start our procedural code okay now what we need, what we want to do is, 
once our so now our trigger has been triggered what do we want to have happen well we want to insert data into our new table that we created so we're going to say insert into now this is this is the sql code now forum actually we need to, that's actually uh the table so the table we called was trigger right the table name was trigger again be safe and do forum.trigger okay this can't fail forum.trigger now uh, in an insert statement, the next thing is the name of the, the, the columns. So that was CMD, that was time, that was CMD underscore issuer, and that was email. Those are the names of the columns in the table. Remember, I showed you that earlier. The next part of this is values. Okay, And the values, the first thing is going to be simply a string. This is an insert statement. We're going to catch that as our first command. Next, we're going to get the timestamp. To get that in MySQL, you can use now, parenthesis, parenthesis. The built -in, there is a built-in function for catching the current time, which is called now. Next thing is going to be, we need to catch the IP address or the user that's currently using it. To do that, uh, MySQL has a built-in function called current user. This will give you who is accessing the database. The next thing that we want to do is the email. Now, when you do these triggers, you have two constants that you can use, new and old. They are objects, and like all objects, you access their properties with a dot. So the new object, which is NEW, holds all of the column data for the newly for the information that's about to be inserted not the information that you're replacing in a update statement okay there is no old for an insert so we're going to do new dot email which is the email column of the new data that we're going to insert okay and that ends that SQL statement and now because we're in a program we're going to use the semicolon to end it because we're in a program the semicolon is part of this program. The next thing we need to do is end our trigger using the keyword end. So all of our trigger information goes between the beginning and the end here. Now we need to send our program back to the SQL prompt. There's not really a SQL prompt, but we need to end it with our same trigger that we, or with our same uh, delimiter that we used before. Okay? And that's the double slash. Now if all goes well, when I hit go, that will successfully, there you go that trigger has been successfully created. Okay, now let's go back and just confirm that it's here. We'll click on our user table, we'll go down to the bottom, and where all of our information is, there's actually a new table of information called triggers. It tells us the name of the insert, which is we're catching the insert. You can change that to whatever you want. Our time is before and our event is on the insert. So we don't necessarily need all of this information because it's kind of repetitive, but it's there if you need it. Now that our insert has been created, Let's go back to our table, our, our trigger table. We're going to hit browse, and it's not going to come up with anything because there's no data. Let's see if our trigger works. So now we're going to pull up our fake form. We're going to create a user called test user 2 and we're going to give it a password, password, and we're going to give it a fake, I think I spelled that wrong. Okay, now we're going to give it a fake email, test at uh, test2.com test at test2.com and now we're going to enter this ca this captcha here and with that now we'll continue on and complete our registration upon doing that now our trigger should have been triggered okay so let's check our database now when we hit browse you see that our trigger actually returned insert the exact time root at localhost was the user and you can see the email of the new user that was created so triggers are really powerful and they're in the bigger database programs bigger than MySQL so use your imagination of how you can use triggers to make your website and your web apps much more uh, much more powerful